Hey everyone, welcome to week seven of my free motion series. Um, this week is uh, all, all the techniques are uh, related to thread painting and thread sketching. So <clears throat> um, basically that just means drawing with the sewing machine or um, machine embroidery, but freehand and not computerized, of course. So, um, and there's just lots of different, and you know, a lot of the things we've already done are technically that anyway, but um, I thought I would spend uh, one, one session just on that and some variations of it. And um, so let's see, for just kind of plain old, I did some stitching in the centers of the leaves and, and then for a little bit more fun, I did some um, frost around the leaves and that's kind of fun because it's supposed to be rocks and moss and lichen and stuff. Not sure it's obvious, but, um, <laughs> but fun little, fun, quick little project anyway. I'm not sure it's done. I haven't put binding on it yet. I'm, I might, or I might frame it. I don't know. It's so, but I might add more too. We'll see. So then the next thing was, um, trying to purposely have the tension be off so that it pulls the bobbin thread up to the top. That one was not working very well and also not showing up very well. So <clears throat> that one was a little bit of a wash, but um, it's cool when it works. Um, something I've seen um, machine embroiderer Alison Holt do and she makes it look really cool. I couldn't quite do that. Uh, then the last one is putting two threads in the needle, two different colors. And so it has a similar, but not exactly the same effect. Um, and it was, it worked a lot better. So that's what I did the moss with two pens of green. And I might even go over it again with another one or two colors to add even more texture and colors. So a uh, fun little project. I think it took me two or three hours to get to where I am now. Cause it does, it does take a little while to do just all that stitching, even though it's very small. So anyway, enjoy this week's video. Okay. This week is all about, or all four of the things are just variations of thread painting, thread sketching. So those are probably the most common uses for, you know, the free motion foot other than quilting. Uh, and all it really means is that you're drawing with the sewing machine. So people use thread sketching and thread painting pretty much interchangeably. I just think of sketching as being, you know, something that's got kind of looser, and less solid filled in and painting is like more, you know, kind of like the difference between what you would do with a pencil and what you would do with a paintbrush. Um, but either way, all you've got is the skinny piece of thread. So really it's kind of all like a pencil. It's just a matter of how many times you go over it uh, or maybe a pen because it's kind of permanent. You can get it out, but it's not fun. So um, I'm going to do like, I, I could probably do a whole class just on on thread painting because that's kind of my thing. It's my favorite thing to do. Uh, and I will put in a, hopefully a bunch of photos of projects that I've done using this, but I'm going to just show you the basics today and, and then a couple of kind of fun variations. And I have already prepped a little scene here. The, the tundra here in the fall it gets these amazing bright red leaves. And so I thought I would do something with some of those. And then I, uh, I'm going to add some moss and some lichen on the rocks and uh, some veins on the leaves and then another fun little thing that I'll get to in a minute. So I've already uh, put my thread in the machine and I for most of this I'm just going to use kind of a, a thread that matches the background for the bobbin. It shouldn't show anyway but just in case it does then I won't have to change it for anything except for one thing where it's going to matter. Uh, so one of the most common things that I use this for is veins on leaves. I think if I sew slowly, I can get away with talking and sewing at the same time. I can already see my top tension is a little bit tight. So when I do veins, I like to go up the leaf and then start coming back and then go up and back and up and back and up and back and up and back. So that way I can do it all without ever jumping to a new spot. It's all connected. And if you do the backwards one first, then you can kind of see where when you're tracing it, you're going forward instead of having to trace it going backwards. Um, you know, backtrack on your previous line. But really, it doesn't matter that much. That's one thing I'm 
really hoping that you guys are getting from this. Also, I'm really hoping I can remember to keep my hands out of the way. I might add some branches down here too. a few of those leaves uh, but but yeah we've we've technically done quite a bit of thread sketching already in this series because anything that you do that's just drawing with the uh, needle and thread is thread sketching um, but it's used to add details or you know small like fine fine lines where you want them or outline things there's quite quite a few ways to use it so I will include a bunch of uh, photos uh, but right now, what I'm going to do is show you a couple of variations. And before I start my next technique, I'm going to tell you what I've got for layers going on here. Because remember last week we talked about um, you, you can't just sew on one layer of fabric very easily unless you have a hoop. And then you still probably want some stabilizers. But every layer that you add counts as a stabilizer, whether it's uh, fabric or batting or fusible web even kind of counts as a layer. And uh, so the stabilizers that they sell are uh, often things that are either thinner so they don't make your project more bulky or they're removable one way or another and either tear away or wash away so that you can get rid of them. But any, any layer counts. Uh, it just adds more stability so that, um, you know, the stitches try to squeeze that fabric together uh, when they're sewing and this helps prevent that. So what I've got is my just my top layer and then I have fusible fleece instead of batting and that is fused to this layer. Uh, I've been doing that more and more lately for art quilty things and it's what I use in my kits uh, because of the process that I use for pretty much all of my kits that comes in handy having that fusible there. And then for backing I've got a piece of interfacing and I'm also doing that more and more for strictly art quilts, especially things that are just going to go in a frame anyway and the back isn't even gonna show. Uh, I've been doing that more often. So, and that's uh, quite a good stabilizer. So, uh, and then I also prefer top stitching needles, but you can probably use, um, you know, a regular Microtex or quilting needle would probably be just fine. Uh, a couple of the techniques we're gonna do today, I really like top stitching needles, especially for, so I'll get into that a little bit more. So this next technique is completely stolen. I didn't come up with it. I didn't come up with a lot of this stuff. I've seen it wherever and I'll try to give credit where I can. Um, this one was uh, that I saw from Allison Holt. She is like the queen of machine embroidery which is also another name for what this is. It's just freehand machine embroidery, just not computerized, you know? Uh, Alison Holt um, lives in the UK and she paints on silk and then adds a lot of stitching and just does incredible, incredible work. Um, eventually when these videos go public, I can put that in the description. I don't think we can access the description the way they are right now. I'm not even sure. So I will uh, definitely put a link to her stuff. So this is um, adding some frost to the edges of the leaves. So I'm going to pretend it's cold out because huh, that's often the case here. And I'm just going to do some scribbly. Scribbly stitching on the edges of the leaves. And I'm basically, I'm going back and forth, uh, almost like a zigzag, but I'm trying to, you know, vary it quite a bit, which is easier than trying to make it even. <laughs> I'm also going a little bit onto the leaf and a little bit off of the leaf, both. Alright, 
So uh, I hope you can tell how cool that looks. It looks even better from a little bit of a distance. When you're, you know, when you're working on something, you're right up close and it kind of looks, looks messy. But from a little bit of a distance, this looks super cool. So I'll finish the rest of it and show you that at the end. Um, but that is a super fun technique. So let's see. I think that's all I need to say about that. And I'll go on to the next one. Trying to keep this video shorter this week. All right, I'm having trouble getting this next one to work. It's cool when it works. I've seen it done. It's not something I normally use. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get the tension purposely off so that the top thread is pulling the bobbin thread to the top and then you see them both. And I just have kind of a medium gray on the top and a white on the bottom. I'm trying to make a little bit of kind of reindeer moss here. I thought that would just add a little bit of texture. It's subtle. Uh, and you, so you could do more contrasting thread. But this is probably the best example. It's hard to see. Hey, kind of working cool. Um, but I've been having trouble with the thread breaking. Right, let me get back over on the dark and see if you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, actually, I should have used more contrasty thread anyway, because you'd have to be very close to be able to see this. Um, but it would be cool, like in the center of a flower, you can do two shades at once and, um, and it just adds texture. I've seen it done with, well, and okay, let me back up. Alison Holt just uses one layer of silk and then she uses a hoop. Uh, so she doesn't use any stabilizers, I don't think at all. I'm not positive about that, but I don't think she does. And so I, it could be that I've got a lot of layers going and that's partly why I'm having trouble with the thread breaking. Not everybody does it this way, for sure. Like a lot of people prefer to thread paint just on the top layer and the appliques and they don't have the batting there yet or backing or anything. But I kind of just have always done it this way and I kind of like it, but there's no right or wrong for sure. So, uh, but maybe that's partly why I'm having issues. I don't know. I don't know why it seems like it will, the tension will go off when I don't want it to just fine. But I have had trouble, like I did a video on just I have a whole video on thread tension and I was having trouble getting my Berninas to to go off far enough to show you what's wrong you know what looks wrong <laughs> but like they seem to be a little bit self-correcting so that's kind of annoying I like to be in control so anyway this just looks like scribbly stuff right now uh, but it's another another option for you to try or especially if you're just having trouble getting your tension right then stick another color in and make it take advantage of it so, all right, and so next I'm going to show you another way to have a similar effect, but not exactly. And that is by just putting two threads through the needle. So the tension, and I definitely have never tried both, have the tension off and put two threads through the top, then you technically have three colors. That sounds like trouble, considering how much trouble I'm having just with this one. Um, so I think I will put my tension back to normal and put uh, two colors of thread through the top. And this is where I really like to use a top stitching needle um, and a larger size one. I am using a size 90, 14 top stitching needle. They have, let's see if I can get one out here. They have a very, and I'll get my hand in front of the light. <laughs> I can't do it. Oh, I can't get it. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, they have a very long skinny eye. Maybe there. Uh, I'll move it around because I can't see what you see. Anyway, they have a long skinny eye, so there's room for an extra thread. But I actually pretty much use them for all of my stitching. I Even metallics, I think I like them better, so I use them a lot. So I'm going to switch threads, and then I'll show you that one. All right, I have put two threads in the top. They're just two different shades of green. Possibly a little bit more contrast than I would normally do, but I hope you can see it. Um, so I had to use my cone holder because I only have one horizontal pin on the machine. So, and I'm using cones. So I, I just, you know, put them on their spot and then I grab them both and thread, thread the machine as, as if they were one thread. So you just thread them both at the same time as if they're one thread. And I did have to lower my tension a little bit. 
And uh, also I was going to mention, um, this is starting to puff up a little bit because the more stitching you add, the more it's going to draw up the sections where you did stitching. So I'm just planning on adding quite a bit of stitching to this whole thing. And then, and if you have something like that, just a little bit of quilting does a lot, goes a long way to fixing it also. But that's why you need the stabilizers because the more stitching you add, the more it will shrink up the area where you did the stitching and make it kind of warpy. Um, I think I saw someone who did a test once where they did just really, really heavy stitching over the whole piece. And they did um, straight lines going up and down and up and down and up and down. And I think in that case, I think it shrunk it in one direction and stretched it in one direction because the, the thread is also adding, taking up some space. And so it can like force the fibers apart a little bit when it's that dense. So that was kind of interesting. But I think the direction the stitches were going, it tended to squeeze them together. So that was super interesting. But anyway, so I'm going to try making a little bit of moss here and try again to keep my hands out of the way. Let's see, where do I want moss on this one? Hmm. Maybe I'll start right here and bring my bobbin thread up. All right, so first I'm going to just do a little bit of scribbling. And one of my threads is darker, so you probably can't see it. Hmm, I thought I was choosing better this time. And I can go over this more times if I want to. I can go over it with two more kinds of thread and add even more variation. And then I just wouldn't go quite as dense the first time. And I'm just going to try to make this look a little bit like moss, which is basically just scribbling again. I'm trying not to hit my leaves because the moss would be under. That's a way to um, add, you know, two colors at once. And this is cooperating much better than having trying to get my tension off. I'm also doing a little bit bigger stitches right now. So that's, you know, something you can do or not do. But that's another way to add a little bit of texture. So anyway, looks a little bit like moss. Um, we also have some moss here. I wonder, let's see if I can find a, find a good spot. Hmm. Let me go over here. Uh, we have some moss that from the top kind of looks like, maybe everybody does, I don't know. It looks like little stars. I'm sewing again so if you couldn't hear that I'm making trying to simulate some moss that kind of looks from the top looks like little six pointed stars I've tried a lot of things to try to get rid of these shadows they're bothering me Keep working on that one. Something new every week, though. So, anyway, that's uh, two colors of thread in the needle at the same time. A uh, large eye top stitching needle works great for that. Um, so, I will finish this up and show you what it looks like at the end. But I think that that's it for this week.